Hello, I'm Matt Schwartz with Schwartz Insurance Group in Louisville, Kentucky, here with another in our video education series focused on employee benefits. We're here to teach you about the basics of reform and other benefit concepts, share the latest ideas and tactics that employers are using to be successful, and finally to position you to be a pro with regard to your benefits, communication, and culture. Wellness is a huge topic right now, um, not the least of which is the fact that the new law has created greater incentives, uh, starting to include preventive care in most benefit plans, and increasing the, uh, uh, I guess, incentive level that can be used uh, legally within a plan. So, but it's also the fact that obviously we are not a healthy nation. Uh, there's recognition that in order to reduce cost, uh, you have to engage folks, uh, you have to reduce claims, and obviously in order to reduce claims, you have to have folks that are healthier and making better decisions. So what I want to talk about is the strategic side of planning out a wellness plan. Whether you are a small employer that has 10, 20, 60 people, or you are larger and you have a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand, the planning process that goes into uh, creating a successful wellness program is critical. Now my perspective on this comes from my participation we have here in Louisville. Um, it's something called the Mayor's Healthy Hometown Movement and it, it focuses uh, really on wellness. There was a component of that was that was the worksite wellness piece. Uh, we now know it as the Worksite Wellness Council of Louisville, I, and I've served as chair of that for two years, and mainly what's given me a is a perspective of what employers are doing and what it takes to be successful. So I'd kind of laid out there, there's really almost five steps that have to take place in order to be successful. Number one is you have to know why you're doing this. Uh, do you want to reduce claims cost? Do you want to improve productivity? Uh, do you simply want to engage employees and create a, a culture of health? So whatever those reasons are for you and your population, and that's going to differ whether you've had a plan in place or whether this is a brand new uh, project. But that's number one. Uh, the second thing that, that's really critical is getting leadership support. So to the extent that you need to have resources, you want to convince leadership, you want to be able to show them why this is a good thing. Now, the, the statistics that are out there when you talk about large employers, self-funded plans, a three to one payoff is a lot of times what you hear. Um, we've probably more commonly now heard that as opposed to thinking about ROI, return on investment, meaning get three dollars back for the dollar you invest, we've probably heard more discussion about the term VOI, which is value on investment, because even if you can't specifically tag a, a dollar figure, that doesn't mean wellness is not an effective strategy and not a good engagement tool and not a good way to build a better culture uh, and, and to create more loyalty with your employees. So again, that is number two is, is getting leadership engagement. Um, the third thing is actually to, to get feedback from your employees so that you know what they want and what would they do within a wellness program. If, if uh, employees feel like uh, getting an orange on Fridays would be a, a great uh, wellness program, well, that's one thing to consider. Others may say, hey, I, I'd like uh, to be able to go to the gym. I'd like more encouragement. Uh, I want some team activities. Uh, I want incentives to do this or that. Whatever it is, um, you know, one of the best ways to build loyalty and, and to build a positive, uh, a, a positive culture is to help somebody do something that they might not have been able to do on the, uh, by themselves. And that's exactly what a wellness program can do. So anyway, beyond that, uh, obviously once you have that uh, feedback and you know the direction and kind of a plan that you want, you, you've got to lay out an action plan. A lot of times that includes having uh, wellness champions or wellness committees so that you can make sure that there's an implementation team and that you have specific things that you're aiming to do. Whether that be on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis, you want to have something that allows you to move forward and at the end of that time, okay, you've got a new objective. So as you get to the very end of that, the fifth and final step, which is critical, is, is review. And again, the larger the plan, the uh, you know maybe more sophisticated that review may be. It may be looking at claims data and looking at what was the percentage of smokers that uh, changed or what was the reduction in, in diabetic uh, uh, expenses. But whatever that is, again, you've got to have some objectives that you're uh, going after in order to evaluate and then reset. Everybody starts at a different point in the totem pole, so to speak. So 
Wherever you are in wellness, whether it's a startup program or whether you're looking to refresh or simply improve what you've had in place in the past, um, there's always room for opportunity. There's only opportunity to move forward. So with that said, if there's anything that we can do to help, again, we've seen a lot of different programs, uh, seen a lot of ways that employers have started or refreshed their programs. Please let us know. Uh, if you have any feedback on future topics, let us know that as well. And again, look for the next in our video education series. And you too can be a pro with regard to your benefits, communication, and culture. Thank you.